go. All right. Hi. So uh, my name is Franny Gady. I'm the head of digital scholarship services at the University of Oregon. Um, and I'm really excited uh, to to show you today our uh, first spotlight exhibit uh, here at the university. Um, so this is our public domain day uh, exhibit that was built in celebration of, uh, for the first time in over 20 years, um, new work from 1923. Uh, entering the public domain. And so here I worked with um, staff from uh, three different units in the libraries um, to celebrate uh, movies, books, and music, uh, both from university collections and just kind of other uh, works out there in the world uh, that have entered the public domain or that were already in the public domain um, and built kind of um, multiple pages that were celebrating these works. So it was kind of um, separated into three separate categories, movies, books, and music. Um, so you can see um, on the main page here, um, we separated them here. And so um, movies was done by one person, books was done by one person, and music. Uh, was done by one person and so that was done so that we could each kind of focus on one area without editing um, on top of each other or worrying about that um, and also kind of taking advantage of letting people sort of customize a little bit here um, and then the main page was one that um, I worked on myself uh, so we can uh, kind of the, so the introduction here was built to kind of introduce people to the idea of what is the public domain. This year was particularly special because it, uh, the public domain just kind of unfroze uh, for the first time in a while. Um, and so this was uh, completed. Other than myself, I was really the only person who had experience working with digital exhibits before. So I'd worked with Omeka previously, um, but everybody else. I'd actually worked with, um, I sat down and trained on the system um, and then they completed um, themselves. So I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit to look at the page. Um, this is primarily completed um, with non-UO um, collections using uh, Wikipedia uh, public domain uh, materials. And you can just kind of see our um, our UO branding header and footer here. Um, and so this is just talking a little bit about copyright. And then here we are also doing some coverage of this year's public domain day. So talking about uh, Duke Law School, um, the New York Times and the Smithsonian Magazine had some widely shared public domain coverage. And so I'm going to scroll back up here and actually get into the meat of the site. Um, so one thing you'll notice up here at the top is that we didn't go for a particularly complex navigation. We relied on um, kind of the big uh, page widget to be our primary navigation on the main page of the site. Um, and this is also our only live exhibit right now. So I'm, I'm just showing you this exhibit. Um, I think we're about to have a second one uh, debut shortly. Um, but uh, for now, this is this is it. So um, so we use we're using the page widget as our main navigation, but once I go a little bit deeper um, into the site, you'll see that we're using the side navigation to go between the different feature pages. So I'm going to click here into movies, and so this was completed um, by one of our staff members, Lydia Harlan, who works in our collection services, which is kind of our cataloging technical services unit. So she'd never worked on a, a, a digital exhibit before, and she did an amazing job. So we sat and we did about um, an hour, hour and a half worth of training. Um, she worked with our cinema studies librarian um, to identify uh, the five titles uh, that were included here. I think two of these are 1923 titles and the other three um, had previously passed into the public domain. Um, and so again, we're using the page widget here to um, highlight these thumbnails of movie posters to really create kind of an attractive um, kind of mechanism to get deeper into the site, but we're also using the um, sidebar navigation to get deeper into the site here. And then there's also an essay that's talking about uh, copyright and public domain and how important it is um, for the public domain to actually help with film preservation and also why there aren't more films in the public domain. Um, so this was actually kind of a really great sort of scholarly exercise and also presenting a piece of art that's uh, passed into the public domain and again, as we scroll down back to our UO branding, and so I'm going to scroll back up slowly here so as not to make anybody ill. 
And coming back up to the top of the page, I also wanted to note that the um, piece of art in the masthead here is a 1923 art by Kandinsky, uh, Kandinsky um, that is also being used in our marketing materials across that did pass into the public domain, um, 1923. Um, that's really gorgeous in its full uh, in its full splendor, but I really like it in the. Uh, uh, in the masthead here, although that's that's one thing that uh, we kind of negotiated with is like, what's going to look good in this super skinny uh, bar? So that's something we've worked with with um, Spotlight is is how how do we how do we work with this masthead? So um, I'll show you the full version of it when we talk about marketing in a little bit. So uh, just kind of going through the site, each of these pages um, features the. Um, uh, movie posters, um, a little bit about the film itself, and since these films are all in the public domain, um, also embedding the film uh, within the site and have done a little bit of customization to um, bring the film over into uh, center uh, justification here. And so just going to briefly go down. And so that's basically the um, format for each of these films here. Um, so the first three films are um, were all previously entered the public domain, and then um, Safety Last, and um, I believe Salome uh, both entered the public domain this year. All right, so um, these are all um, not necessarily um, particular for our uh, UO library collections, um, but all of the music that is highlighted here is in fact from uh, University Library Collections. And so these are pulled from Oregon Digital, um, our uh, digital asset platform, um, and so our historic sheet music collection. And we're selected by Ann Schaefer, um, our, uh, our music librarian. Um, and so I pulled these over. They had particularly beautiful um, front pieces. Um, and also we have the, the full sheet music to go with them. And then I'm highlighting the lyrics on the left-hand side. Um, so I'm just gonna flip through these really quickly. Um, and Downhearted Blues here um, and uh, is part of the um, Women's uh, Songwriters Collection. And then a Lucky Duck also has uh, just some really fabulous art that I thought was super entertaining. Um, and these were all from 1923 as well and are showing off just a couple of the different widgets uh, that Spotlight had. And that was one of the other ideas with the Spotlight exhibit is just wanting to um, show off kind of some of the different functionalities, both to uh, the rest of the libraries and getting people from across the libraries involved in what this can do. And then finally for the book section, these um, are all 1923 um, books entering the public domain. And one of the things that I wanted to highlight here is that um, these books are all in our UO Libraries collections. And so there are links to um, look at it in our catalog. Um, we have a mapping feature where you can like find it in the physical library um, to view the full text uh, online. Uh, there are excerpts here, um, have the audiobooks embedded, and here there was an animated film adaptation that was released, and so embedding that. So really taking advantage of the fact that this is a digital online exhibit, and what can we really do with that? Um, so thinking about that kind of broadly. And so um, this part of the exhibit is actually one that I put together. Um, and so uh, a lot of these images here are actually pulled from Wikipedia. And so using our, um, using some Creative Commons licensed images, in this case, this was dedicated to the public domain, not something that passed into the public domain. And so distinguishing between those types of images. Um, and so following that same format for some of these, um, some of these other titles. Um, so that is really um, the extent of this public domain day images. In terms of advertising it, uh, we have it on our um, main library website here. So it's rotating through our news and events. And it's not on the main page right now, uh, but if you go to our full events calendar, it's on the list of our current exhibits here. Um, and so if you click on it, it'll take you there and then, um, 
on the exhibits page. So here's the here's the picture of the um, Kadinsky painting in all of its glory. And um, it's been sent out to a number of university leaders. Um, and I'm also in the process of um, submitting it to the Association of Research Libraries as a um, kind of a collection that was developed uh, for uh, Public Domain Day um, at the request of my library dean. Um, so that's kind of how we're currently marketing it right now. Um, and I think that's kind of the end of my little demo right here. And I'm happy to take questions. This is great, um, Franny, thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, what, what a beautiful job. And thank you also so much for talking about the collaborations and how you used Spotlight. I think that was particularly enlightening and we, we don't, talk a lot about marketing in here and I think it's um it's a really um important part of um any service framework and so it's good to it's good to hear your your um thoughts about that as well and and let us know what it is that you've done mm -hmm. so um without any further ado um please make sure you unmute yourself um we're gonna open it up for questions yeah. Oh, I just wanted to note one other thing um, that was really important to me while I was building the site, um, kind of in some of the introductory materials. It was also really important to me that I linked out to our research guides that were talking about um, finding images that were either um, free to use or reuse that had kind of our copyright guide and um, taking advantage of some of our other guidance and resources, other library resources as well. Um, so, you know, kind of thinking about it as um, an educational resource. That was kind of something also that was really present in my mind as I was helping build this site. So. so like a holistic approach where you're really seeking to make all kinds of connections. Exactly. That's yes. super cool. Yeah. Okay. Questions, anybody? I also want to acknowledge um, uh, our, our developer for uh, the platform, Linda Sato, who works in our library technology uh, systems group, um, who has pretty much single-handedly um, brought Spotlight to the University of Oregon. Um, she's been working with it for a very long time and um, has really helped us build connections uh, to our Oregon Digital and um, yeah, has, has just been absolutely invaluable resource. So um, very much a need to give credit where credit is due here, but uh, yeah, has really worked to make this come true, so. Thanks for that acknowledgement. Yeah. Franny, nice job from here at Texas A&M. We posted your link to the group and, and it prompted folks here to say, why don't we do a spotlight exhibit <laughs> for our submissions as well. So thank you very much. Uh, you talked about centering one of the widgets. Would you would you go through how you did that, Franny? Um, I think it was it was actually a kind of uh, technical uh, had to had to happen behind the scenes. So um, I, I actually have one of my colleagues here to that or um, might be able to share how that was done uh, later on. Okay. Great. We were just wondering if, if you changed the CSS or if that was something you could do in the embed or how, just how you did that. It was in the CSS, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because I kept trying to change it in the in the embed because um, I really like the way that it looks when you're in the preview view for it, when you get like the really nice big video and I'm like, I want it to look like that. <clears throat> Um, and um, and so so I, I went to Linda and I said, can you do this for me? And and she made that happen. So perfect, perfect. Thank you. Uh, yes, when you when you look at that, Franny, if you don't mind <coughs> adding it to our, uh, I think it'd be okay to put it into the minutes, wouldn't it, Kathy? Maybe a little note about how you did that, just so that we can keep up with it. Um, sure, I, I think that that would be a great a great spot for it. That would be fine. Sure, will do. Thank you. Other questions, anybody? Okay. Um, Franny, this is Vanessa here from Harvard. Um, thank you for doing the demo, and especially on such short notice, that was great. Um, I was just kind of curious what your overall experience was working with Spotlight. Did you 
um, you, you mentioned that you have another exhibit coming up. So what were the sort of things that you wished it did or that you maybe customized to, to get it to how it is? And you know, what, what are your plans with it for your next exhibit? Yeah, so there were very few things that we customized to get it where it was. I think we did a little bit, um, kind of like Stanford did with the um, kind of changing the very top menus. Um, so all that's up there just as kind of digital exhibits to get you back to the home page. Um, but otherwise, kind of functionally, it's pretty much right out of the box, I think. I'm, I'm looking at my colleague here to nod at me. Um, yeah, um, other than that, I think for the, um, for the other exhibit, I think we're kind of uh, just sticking with uh, where we're at. Um, we're kind of collecting our tips and tricks as it were, sort of with, um, with what I learned from um, the previous exhibit, um, things like, uh, you can't add a page to the page widget until you've clicked the little ticky box to make the page live, for example. Um, you know, th things, things along those lines. Um, you know, I, I think um, there's, there's a little bit of push towards some of the curators are interested in having some more um, kind of customization and flexibility, but I, I think then there's also this real... Um, appreciation for the way that content sort of stands on its own um, and, and really just uh, it, that the content is key, that it, it really stands out. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not sure uh, we've, we've done enough exploration um, to, to really have a particular sense of that. Um, I, I know I did get a little frustrated when I was trying to do, you know, line and paragraph breaks and things started creating new, um, new text boxes for me. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm still, I think I'm still exploring the platform and, and getting a hold and a handle of it. I think our plan for uh, service management is we're going to have a, um, a small group of about three to four people who are going to be um, kind of doing regular trainings and holding sort of working sessions for people who are um, working on um, exhibits and, and helping with kind of approving um, digital exhibits. Um, and actually, I think the second exhibit has in fact gone live um, since yesterday. So um, I'd be happy to share that as well. Um, and I will drag the curator um, of that to our next meeting to talk to y'all. Um, but um, yeah, and to talk about his experience. But um, yeah, no, generally I've been, I've been really pleased with the way that it functions. I think it's, it's very um, user-friendly. Um, thanks, Franny. Um, we would love to have um, a second demo next time. <laughs> Um, <laughs> from you, that would be that would be fabulous. I have um, sort of a comment and a question. Boy, when you when you were talking about the line and paragraph breaks, I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have some. So um, some people here know that we created an exhibit at Stanford called Exhibits Documentation. Yes, um, and uh, right. referred to it very regularly while I was in the process of um, working on the public domain exhibit. Oh, great. That is, that is heartening to hear. We yes. were actually hoping that it might be useful to others. There certainly are Stanford um, specific things in that documentation, mm -hmm. but there are a number of uh, pieces of the documentation that are much more generalizable. Um, we actually have some tips about the, about the line and paragraph uh, break stuff. I will, when I find out the exact page, on the exhibits documentation exhibit. I'll add that to our um, agenda, uh, our meeting notes after the fact. But um, I assume you're also fam familiar with at least some limited ability of Spotlight to respond to GitHub markup. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. and, and okay. I actually figured that out by looking at the um, exhibit on exhibits that, that y'all put up. So great. that was great. great, great. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, 
then, then the, the sort of the question, the other question that I had, and you've, you, you've kind of now partially answered it, but um, first of all, it was sort of about doc, your own documentation and training. So um, when you were giving the demo, you mentioned that you sat down with people to train them and it was approximately an hour to an hour and a half. That very much matches up with what we're doing, by the way. Um, at Stanford, we have um, sort of a standard-ish 90-minute um, training session that we provide. Mm -hmm. And people are anxious for training, but we, we really ascribe to the model of just-in-time training. In other words, your content, not, not all your text has to be written, right? But your, your content needs to be... Um, of your content and your metadata needs to be available and in whatever updated form, whether you're grabbing it from, um, um, you know, you're bringing in IIIF content, it's in your own digital repository that you're, that you're using to, to sort of sync or upload. Um, because if we train people, we found that if we train people in a vacuum, <laughs> you know, if there's no there there yet, that um, they walk away and they forget it. They need to be able to work on that right away. So it sounds like that's what you did. And mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned also that you were sort of starting to compile a list, if I understood you correctly, mm -hmm. of sort of like tips or tricks or things like that. Mm -hmm. Do you plan on creating your own in-house um, user doc, written user documentation or user facing documentation? I, th I think ultimately that's the plan. Um, I, I don't think we want to reinvent the wheel with all of the good stuff that's already out there. So I think it'll be probably adaptation um, of a good chunk of, of what's already there. Um, we do have um, some customization, particularly with, I mentioned, um, Oregon Digital. We have a mechanism for bringing content in from our repository. Um, so there will be a fair bit in relation to that um, of bring, bringing that content over. Um, but yes, I, I do want to have that. Um, and then I think we're, we're planning on doing regular trainings um, associated with, with Spotlight. So, um, so instead of kind of the um, just one-on-one -on -one to, to have it. So, you know, okay, you know, it's, it's that because we do a regular exhibit um, kind of application period where people can apply to uh, have their exhibits um, kind of approved by ad administration um, kind of each year. And so I think we'll do training in association with that. So it, it, um, so it won't be just sort of off the cuff as it were. Um, so that, that's kind of the idea right now. Um, we'll kind of see how it develops though. <laughs> oh, well, great. Um, we, we look forward to staying tuned and um, this is a pitch to you and everybody else on this call um, about our, our Spotlight Community Wiki and please, um, we encourage you to share um, anything in writing, even in draft form, things don't have to be perfect. Um, it's how we learn from each other and, and how, and all of that material is, um, that's been uploaded there so far is definitely in the spirit of sharing. We really hope that you, um, reuse that so that you don't have to start from square one. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Hey, Kathy, and, and well, everyone, um, I was also looking at your exhibits on um, your exhibits documentation and have found it incredibly useful, um, especially the, is it references or resources section you have? I think that's really kind of goes through all the widgets and the functionality. Um, and I'm wondering when, you know, because I'm writing our documentation right now, and I'm wondering if there is maybe a, is it wise to link to your, your um, exhibit wherever it makes sense? Or is there maybe an appetite to creating a, a more generalizable spotlight um, documentation that, you know, doesn't have any institution specific resources in it that we can all link to? Huh, that's an interesting question. I think that might be a little challenging. Um, 
um, because every every institution has their own local implementation that has um, perhaps, I'm just guessing here, a sufficient amount of idiosyncrasy <laughs> that it might be really hard. You know, it might be daunting to have something that was, but I don't know. I think we ought to, we ought to, would, would you add that to the notes? Because I, I, I think that we ought to um, make sure that we sort of have that in our parking lot, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, let's see, I was going to say something else. Um, oh, yes. Um, I think linking to our site is fine. Um, we do, by the way, um, maintain an internal change log so that when um, through helping um, other exhibit creators, we found out we've either made a minor mistake or um, more often than not, something that we've written could use further amplification. Um, then we make sure that we log that on a change log and then every two or three months we're, we're you know, we're trying to keep up with actually making those changes. So that's just sort of an FYI for, for, for everybody. Um, before we get too uh, far much further afield and because we're still recording, I wanted to see if anybody else had any specific questions for Franny before I stop the recording. Sounds like, sounds like no. And um, um, I'm going to stop the recording then and we can continue with the rest of the agenda. Thank you again, Franny, for a great demo. Absolutely. Thank you for the invitation.